Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of endometrial cancer. If you want more information on endometrial cancer, including risk factors, pathogenesis, how it's diagnosed and treated, please check my full lesson on this topic. Before we get into the signs and symptoms, let's talk about what endometrial cancer is. So endometrial cancer is also known as corpus cancer. It is a cancer of the endometrium, and the endometrium is the inner lining of the uterus. And endometrial cancer is going to be malignant cells of glands of the endometrium. Now, there are a large list of risk factors for getting endometrial cancer, and most of them are related to increased estrogen levels. So either abnormally high estrogen levels, unopposed estrogen, meaning that there is no progesterone opposing the estrogen, or long periods of exposure to estrogen. Again, if you want more information on those risk factors, please check out my full lesson on this topic. Endometrial cancer is actually the most common gynecological cancer. Females have a lifetime risk of 2 to 3% for getting this type of cancer. And the mean age of onset is 62 years old. Now, the topic of this lesson is the signs and symptoms of endometrial cancer. And endometrial cancer does cause a variety of signs and symptoms. And we're going to talk about those signs and symptoms and why they occur in the upcoming slides. So by far, the most important sign of endometrial cancer is abnormal uterine bleeding. This is, again, going to be the most important and common sign. Now, I didn't talk about this before, but there are actually two types of endometrial cancer. There's type 1 and type 2. Again, if you want more information, please check out my full lesson on this topic. But by far, the majority of cases are type 1, and this is going to be the common and most important sign in type 1 endometrial cancer, that abnormal uterine bleeding. It is a painless bleeding. There is no pain associated with the bleeding. And you can imagine that it is going to be due to erosions and or tissue growth from the cancer in the endometrium. So as the cancer grows in the endometrium, it starts to gather up blood supply and can bleed. And that can be seen as abnormal uterine or abnormal vaginal bleeding. Now, there are three subsets of patient populations that it's important to recognize abnormal uterine bleeding in. One is going to be premenopausal patients. Another group is perimenopausal patients. And the third group is postmenopausal patients. So in premenopausal patients or patients who have not undergone menopause or are not close to menopause, abnormal uterine bleeding is going to appear as heavy menstrual bleeding or menorrhagia. So if a patient has a normal menstrual cycle and they start to have heavier menstrual bleeding than usual, so that would be menorrhagia, that could be a sign of endometrial cancer, although there are many other causes of menorrhagia. And then another potential sign that can be seen in premenopausal patients is intermenstrual bleeding or intermenstrual spotting. So these are going to be more vague findings in these patients. But what's going to be more important is in the other two groups of patients, because majority of patients who have endometrial cancer are going to be postmenopausal and perimenopausal. So premenopausal patients are less common and a lot of the signs of the disease can be more vague and nonspecific. So they can be more difficult to detect. In perimenopausal patients, what should happen is that as a patient starts to undergo or get close to menopause, their periods or their menstruation should decrease in severity and become less and less frequent over time as they get closer and closer to menopause. So if they start to have that pattern where they have decreasing frequency and decreasing severity of menstrual bleeding, so their menstrual cycles start to taper off, and then all of a sudden it starts to increase in frequency and severity of menstrual bleeding again, that is a sign of endometrial cancer. That is abnormal uterine or abnormal vaginal bleeding. So that is something that should be investigated in patients who are experiencing that. Again, in the perimenopausal period, as a patient gets closer to menopause, their periods should get less and less frequent and less and less severe. So their menstrual bleeding should start to taper off as they get closer to menopause. If they have that pattern where they are getting closer and closer to menopause, their periods are tapering off, becoming less frequent, less severe. And then all of a sudden it starts to increase in frequency and increase in severity of the bleeding with each menstrual cycle or each period. That is a potential sign of endometrial cancer. So that again, that is something that should be investigated. And then in the third group, of patients, these are going to be the majority of patients. So postmenopausal patients, 75% of patients who have endometrial cancer are going to be postmenopausal. So this is going to be the major group of individuals who are going to get 
endometrial cancer. And in this group of patients, any postmenopausal bleeding is abnormal. So that is going to be the finding in patients who have endometrial cancer, although many other things can cause abnormal uterine bleeding in all of these groups, including uterine polyps, for instance. So again, abnormal uterine bleeding doesn't necessarily mean that a patient has endometrial cancer, but it should be something that is investigated, especially in perimenopausal and postmenopausal patients. Some other signs and symptoms of endometrial cancer include abdominal pain. So this is going to be a pain or discomfort, and it can be generalized or a focal pain. And it's due to cancer extension into surrounding areas. You can imagine that as the cancer starts to grow into the endometrium and starts to spread beyond the uterus, this can lead to pain from that extension into particular areas in the abdominal cavity. And this abdominal pain is going to be more likely to occur in type 2 endometrial cancer, whereas the abnormal uterine bleeding is going to be more common in type 1. And then another possible sign or symptom of endometrial cancer is bloating. So again, abdominal bloating, and this is going to be more likely to occur in type 2 endometrial cancer. So abdominal pain and bloating can be symptoms of type 2 endometrial cancer, but a lot of times these symptoms are not going to help because they are very vague. So they're nonspecific findings. Many, many conditions can cause these types of issues. So again, these are going to be more likely to occur in type 2 endometrial cancer. Pelvic pressure is also another finding in endometrial cancer. This could be pelvic pain or pelvic discomfort. This is also due to extension of the cancer. And again, this is more likely to occur in type 2 endometrial cancer. And some patients may have a pelvic mass as well. So abdominal pain, bloating, and pelvic pressure could be found in type 2 endometrial cancer more commonly than in type 1, where abnormal uterine bleeding would be more common. Dyspronia is also another potential symptom in patients who have endometrial cancer. Dyspronia is pain during sexual intercourse, and dyspronia may occur with endometrial cancer, but it depends on the location of the cancer in the endometrium. If the cancer is closer to the cervix, it may be more noticeable to the patient. And then due to the excessive bleeding from abnormal uterine bleeding in especially type 1 endometrial cancer, there can be some complications of the excessive bleeding. This excessive bleeding, especially if it's left for long periods of time, can lead to iron deficiency anemia, and iron deficiency anemia can present with its own signs and symptoms. So again, that excessive and or prolonged abnormal uterine or abnormal vaginal bleeding can lead to iron deficiency anemia. And signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia include fatigue, weakness, decreased concentration, presyncope, syncope, so dizziness or fainting. And there can be some other particular signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia, including coelunychia or spoon-shaped nails. There can be angular chelitis, so cracking around the lips. So there are other signs and symptoms that can occur, especially if there is long-term excessive bleeding from endometrial cancer. If you want to learn more about endometrial cancer, please check out my full lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.